In this video, you will learn how to use GeoGebra to create and copy an angle. First, we will create the angle to be copied. Start by selecting the Segment Between Two Points tool from the Line toolbar. Move the cursor onto the drawing pad and click the mouse. This creates point A and attaches a line segment to the cursor. Move the cursor to the left on the drawing pad and click again. This places the second endpoint, B, and creates line segment AB, which is automatically labeled as lowercase a. Make another line segment starting at point B to create line segment BC, labeled as lowercase b. Line segments AB and BC form angle ABC, which we will simply call angle B. Now use the ray through two points tool from the line toolbar to create a half line or ray. This will become one side of the copied angle. Move the cursor onto the drawing pad avoiding line segments AB and BC and click the mouse. This creates point D and attaches a half line to the cursor. Click the mouse on another part of the drawing pad to place the half line. Halfline DE is created and automatically labeled as lowercase c, and point E is created as well. Now we will construct the second side of the angle. Select the Circle with Center Through Point tool from the Circle toolbar. This tool creates a circle with a radius that we can set. Move your mouse to point B and click. This places the center of the circle at point B and attaches the circle's circumference to the cursor. Click anywhere on line segment AB to create point F and circle D. Select the compass tool from the circle toolbar and click first on point F, then on point B. This attaches a circle with the same radius as circle D to the cursor. Move the cursor to point D and click to place the center of the circle at point D. Select the circle with center through point tool again and click on point F to center the circle at point F. Click on the intersection of line segment BC and circle D. This creates circle F and point G. Note that point G is black. I will explain this difference in color shortly. Select the compass tool again and first click on point F, then on point G. This attaches a circle with the same radius as circle F to the cursor. Click on the intersection of circle E and half line DE. This creates point H and creates circle G, centered at point H. Finally, select the ray between two points tool from the line toolbar and click first on point D then on the intersection of circles E and G. This creates point I and thus creates angle D, which is congruent to angle B. We can use congruent triangles to explain why we know that angle D is congruent to angle B. Select the segment between two points tool from the line toolbar and create line segment GF to form triangle BGF and create line segment IH to form triangle DIH. Line segments BG, BF, DI, and DH are radii of circles that were created from the same compass width. So, BG, BF, DI, and DH are congruent. IH was created using the same compass width as GF. So, IH is congruent to GF. So triangles BGF and DIH are congruent by the side-side-side congruence postulate. Since corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, angles D and B must have the same measure. Because GeoGebra is dynamic, we can see what happens when we adjust various elements of the construction. Select the Move tool from the toolbar. This tool allows for the movement of independent or semi-dependent elements in the construction. Dark blue points are independent. They can be moved anywhere on the drawing pad. 
light blue points can be moved anywhere along this segment or curve to which they are attached. Black points cannot be moved with the cursor. They can only be moved by moving the objects to which they are attached. Moving point A can change angle B as well as the radii of circles D and F. Notice how angle D reflects the changes made to angle B. Moving point B also changes angle B. Moving points D and E does not change the measure of angle D because angle D is a copy of angle B. Moving point F along line segment AB changes the radii of circles D, E, F, and G.